Hello, everyone. My name is Maria Teresa Barbist. I'm excited to welcome you to today's SFA Spotlight on a very special day of partial solar eclipses throughout the country. Um, I'm I'm so excited to have Eve Werner here with me, and not just Eve Werner, but um, a couple of more people from the collaborative team who worked for I think more than two months on a project for Influx, uh, recalibrating the unknown exhibition at the Museum of uh, Northern uh, California Art in Chico that uh, opened a couple of weeks ago. And today we're gonna focus on this collaborative project called uh, Articles of Belonging. And uh, Eve Werner is gonna give us um, a short introduction and then uh, please introduce yourself as well, Eve. And, <laughs> um, and then we're going to invite the, the rest of the team uh, to uh, also uh, chime in when we are sharing images of the installation, the process, uh, and then um, the installation of the project. So please take it away, Eve. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Eve Warner. And um... I um, am SA 2022. Um, I live in Chico, where the Museum of Northern California Art is. And I was kind of the person on the ground involved with putting together the Influx exhibition. And um, from the very start, uh, when we were discussing um, putting out the call to artists and how to format the exhibition, we were wanting to have a collaborative aspect to it. Um, we really had no idea what that was going to look like at all. We didn't know what space within the museum it was going to be, but we knew that we wanted to have one. And um, there were a couple of reasons. Me personally, I come from a professional background where I rely on collaboration and the thought of collaborating with um, fellow alumni from, the, um, from SFAI was really exciting. I knew we would come up with something that the process would be just wonderful and fun and challenging and that we would come up with something very meaningful. And I think that we succeeded. And I also wanted to bring something different to the area where the museum is located. Chico is a um, relative, it's a small city in Northern California in a generally agricultural and rural area about three hours north of San Francisco. And um, we do have a University of Cal or a, um, California State University here. We, you, we have lots of very talented artists, but the museum, to my knowledge, had not yet had an installation, a, a site-specific installation included in any of, their, any of their exhibits. So I wanted to do that. And I also wanted to make a platform to enhance the community building that SFAA has made as their primary mission in um, in their reason for existence. And so I wanted to make something where we could make a material thing um, that would enhance community building. So every, our, every alumni of SFAI was invited to participate through the call to artists. And um, there was a, a, a place on the submittal form for the Influx show where you could check a box saying you wanted to participate. And we had around 25 people um, start the process. And um, the rules were really um, simple for the, we started with a brainstorming process that lasted um, really throughout the whole thing. But the um, initial brainstorming process, I think was maybe three or four, probably three or four meetings. We were meeting twice a week. We had a group of about, I would say close to 20 people who were, either attending one or the other um, of the biweekly meetings. Um, we had two different time frames so that we could capture more people, make it convenient for more people. And at first we were just talking about what we wanted to address. We knew we wanted it to fit within the thesis of recalibrating the unknown um, that Influx had already started. And we talked, we talked about the specific flux that losing the school created for all of us. And we talked about flux that was specific to the region where the museum is located in Northern California. And that is that they've had it within the county, which is called Butte County, um, where Chico is um, kind of the, the large, it is the largest city and is sort of the cultural um, 
um, epicenter of Butte County, um, two very large wildfires erased two separate two separate towns. So the town of Paradise was completely burned down in 2018, and the town of Berry Creek was com completely burned down in 2020. So we were, and both of those incidents had a profound effect on everybody in the region not you know it was of course the people who lost their lives there were i think um 101 people died in the fires and um people lost their town their entire towns their homes everything but it also had a profound effect on the entire region because there was a huge leap in of course homelessness and friction and unification. So we wanted to capture all of that. And But the more we talked as a group, um, we also had the privilege of having a very international element to our group of people. Seven different nationalities were represented. And so it became clear that while we were using the school closing and these terrible fires, as the kind of the support network for what we were wanting to do. What we're talking about is worldwide, this feeling of flux, this feeling of change, this feeling of what is happening, how do we, how do we recalibrate for the unknown? And um, after much discussion, and it's a very curvilinear, nonlinear, messy process with lots of ideas being throw out, thrown out, and some will stick, some don't. Some will just act as a springboard for more discussion. What we ended up with realizing that what we were talking about was healing. And um, we were specifically talking about the healing that started with SFAA being founded, this making community and making support networks for each other. And so that's that's how we decided to approach the idea of healing, um, not as a prescription, this is what you're going to do and you will be healed. We were trying to be very sensitive to the fact that um, trauma is expressed differently by every person and the path to healing is like the creative process. It's not curve, it's very messy and nonlinear. And um, so we decided to offer the idea that community and working together is a reasonable approach. It's a hopeful approach to healing. And each of there ended up being five different, I would call them sub installations under the umbrella of articles of belonging. And um, each of them has um, one or more aspects that involve community participation. Some of it is ongoing. There are two parts of it where, two different parts of this installation where ongoing community participation is built into it. And the rest of them, there was community participation in the, the development of the idea and the physical development of the idea. So um, collaboration, cooperation, being supportive are the underpinnings of this. And now I'm going to um, leave it to my co-collaborators to talk about how they worked on their, it, there were, like I said, there are five different parts of the installation. There was mending, there was a commute, there is a community security blanket. There's a union play therapy. There's a, audio um an audio track that unifies all the different elements it's heard throughout the different spaces that the installation takes place and then there is a messaging board that is available internationally so we wanted to specifically talk about healing with the regional community where the museum resides within the walls of the museum and then go to the worldwide address it on a worldwide basis and we're hoping to inspire everyone who's listening to this um, to chime in and um, continue um, the community building by participating in some of these installations. And so with that, I'll turn it over to my colleagues. Thanks so much, Eve. And I've added all the, uh, the 
the collaborators that are here presenting today to the spotlight so everyone can see them. It's Ana Marta Dostorian, Bianca Lago, Eugenie Sica, Emily Jean Corbet, and Guillermo Pulido. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, we are missing Kristen and Martin. They both have family emergencies at the moment. Maybe they are hopping on later. Let me know if you see them and I will add them to the spotlight. But uh, for now, I think we're going to start with um, sharing the first photographs and then everyone chiming in. Feel free to unmute yourself and then please chime in uh, when your artwork comes up and, and uh, talk to us about what's going on. I think this first one is for you, Emily. Actually, that's Anna Marta's piece. Oh my God. See, I don't even know who it is anymore. Anna Marta, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we were talking about using Tyvek as a medium or a material um, to create squares for healing and uh, warming quilts, quilts that could uh, people could um, put around them when they... Um, viewed the installation or viewed the monitors with the ongoing um, art piece, you know. And um, I, I just thought of uh, of beautiful Butte County and, and, and the topographical maps of it. And, um, and I mentioned that and Eve, of course, had so many ideas um, about even how, you know, that really enhance the idea in terms of using um, threads that were the color of uh, suture threads and even suture needles. Um, and Tyvek is the, a material that is used um, for hazmat suits. So when people went into, uh, you know, areas that had been uh, affected by the fires, they could protect themselves from the toxins and, and get the toxins out of the earth. So that's why we, we chose Tyvek. That was one of the reasons. So, so these are topographical maps that I um, projected and, and then, um, and then stitched. I, I wanted to chime in also that, um, the topography of the region is very distinct and was instrumental in why the fire was so fast moving and devastating. So this is one of my pieces. I um, drew some plants that are indigenous to the region and um, my way of drawing is kind of a blind drawing. I'm not trying to exactly replicate. And so, um, it has this little bit of like a, I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, displaced sort of um, quality. And um, in then doing the stitching over top of it, the paper becomes a little bit wrinkled. And also they left a little bit of the drawing marks, which you can't really see in the back. It doesn't matter that much though. But so that um, my feeling, and there's later pictures with this, that when they, um, are placed onto the quilt. My The one that I worked with had very specific rectangular patches that I filled in uh, that some of them hopefully would kind of merge into the background of the quilt, which I think I can say um, that also happened very successfully with Anna Marta's pieces that the um, topography sort of um, merged well with the, um, with the background um, fabric. <clears throat> Um, another reason that we chose Tyvek is because it is used in building materials. So when new places are built, Tyvek is put in as, um, I think, as kind of a protective insulation. So it's a very interesting um, type of medium material to use for this project. And I think that um, part of the beauty of working collaboratively is that everybody threw in different ideas. I don't know who was the you know single person that sort of came up with the Tyvek idea, but it became like very much an essential part of how we all um, put the different pieces together for the quilts. So I'm moving a little bit forward. Melanie, I think she might be joining us later, was also part of this team, right, of this mending project. I think this is Melanie's work, right? Men yeah. Melanie Peach. Yes, it is. And then we have here Eugenie, uh, who uh, was um, 
the lead for this project uh, called Security Co Community Blanket. Go ahead, Eugenie. Um, uh, MT, we can get to it later. I think I put the slides towards the end. Like this was the, this was, so this was uh, just so uh, for other people, like this was the instance that we all met together at uh, Emily's uh, or Emily's friends. And we, <laughs> I hope I, I was so glad I was not, my finger was not in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we started doing this, like stitching and um, uh, and um, uh, knitting, where actually Emily helped me. But the slides uh, for knitting are towards the end. But uh, this is just of, like how we started and how we got together. And it, this was such an amazing day for us to just get together. And thanks, Emily, for for actually taking the initiative and putting putting us, I mean, inviting us all together. So yeah so these are some more process uh images of then how the quilts all came together right that emily wor was working on and Anna Marta. so kind of this laying out of of these patches these tyvek patches and then um you got the, i think emily you got the quilts the broken quilts in San Francisco, and then so so the mending started, and this is Melanie, right? Mm -hmm. So the the sewing process kind of started, and I mean, I can only imagine how many hours it took to not just make all those patches, but then also to put it all together. It was it was fairly labor intensive, <laughs> yeah but really satisfying it was very hands-on and process oriented and uh for me anyway in that sense it was it was very sad it was very gratifying when things went pulled together and were finished mm -hmm. and um when we all met um like this is a great picture to show when we all met a friend generously lent me her beautiful apartment and we all met to kind of work on how everything was going to come together and so we were able to lay out all our pieces together for the very first time and um and just decide what would go well with what pieces and um and I think the layouts for for all of them are really successful. I really love the the um these drawings I and mean, the word is escaping me the landscape the typography. typography yeah and how they went on um the different pieces of fabrics that we used and just the idea that it was this group project people working together which was embodying the theme of, you know, mending communities and um, yeah, every aspect of it just reinforced every other aspect of it. So this is an, an, an uh, this is kind of the completed quilt, right? Um, that then moved into the museum on the day of install and then this was another part of the project the Tyvek bean bags that I sat on and they were really cozy and Melanie uh was kind enough to send us a video as well to demonstrate that it's actually working I really love that and uh, it was very it was very soothing to just sit in it and you did you all hear the no the sound as well the no like there was noise but there was the sound of the beanbag as well and like sitting into it was kind of like this really like you sinking into into it in a sense it was it was very soothing I really enjoyed it and uh yeah Eve can you talk a little bit about this uh really beautiful wooden box that your dad made I, I can. I just want to say also that the beanbag chairs are very supportive. They they envelop you. They they hug you. And so there's. It was just one more aspect of the just how everything fit together to make this soothing, restorative, supportive environment. Um, yeah. I also wanted to ask, what is the plan for the bean bags after the exhibition that came to my mind? I think we have to find a really good spot for them. 
I'm hoping we can continue building on this um, this installation using some of the things that we acquire. Um, we'll talk about the um, the messaging, but we're acquiring all these messages from around the world, and we are acquiring photographs of the sand tray table, which we'll be talking about, and we are acquiring this community security blanket. So I'm hoping that this can be an ongoing project and we talk about how these can be continue to be used. Now you got to talk about your dad, Eve. <laughs> okay. All right. My dad is 92 and his, what, he, you know, you get to be older and you lose some of your abilities and he had many fine abilities and now he is a passionate woodworker. And so we needed Bianca um, needed a sand tray for the sand therapy in the closet. And um, so he made this box out of um, wood from a walnut tree for, that was in paradise that was killed in the fire. And then um, we, we made the leap, all of us, to Chico, right? For Eve, it was a smaller leap, but for <laughs> all of you, you all had to travel up from the Bay Area and um, be there to kind of figure out the pieces in in the place, right? In those different installation spaces. Um, this was the day before the opening. It was just such a beautiful morning. And uh, this is our, our banner for the show. And uh, obviously, huge shout out to um, Jeremy Morgan for curating this incredible exhibition with more than 170 five artists in the end in the show um and this is uh, artwork by Siri Kuritani so this was kind of like how we came into the museum and here <laughs> Eve and Jeremy uh that's you Eve right yeah is, is I guess that it, you yeah. oh that's is that me on the ladder I think that's me on the ladder I think yeah. so that's you on the ladder yeah so we only had, for everyone joining, we only had three days to install um, and, um, you know, two days, I guess, two or three days for unpacking Eve, right, before that. And so yeah, it was a huge... Of unpacking and organizing and three days of installation. And, and so it was not just installing 175 pieces. It was also on top of that, installing the collaborative projects, right? Because all of you also have individual pieces in the show, but also are, are you know, had to install the, the collaborative projects. So I think, Eugenie, that's a video. <laughs> A bit from the craziness, just so you get a feel of um, what was going on. Also, what didn't make it easier was that it's a historic building, which we loved, right, to be in. But it also meant that we can't uh, put nails in the wall. And shout out to Rafa here, uh, who who helped so so much with install. Let me try to, is this the next one? Emily, Emily set up in the basically entrance area, right? When you come into the museum, this was the first, you had the table right there. And can you tell us a little bit about this? The um, collaborative project was open to anybody that wanted to contribute. We really hoped to get um, local folks from Chico who were not maybe necessarily involved with SFAI to participate. And so these are patches that a friend of Eve sent. They were um, sort of collage sewn together pieces of fabric that were very lovely. And um, they were put on, this is like the reverse side of a quilt. Um, I don't remember what the pattern is on the other side, but anyway, the reverse side was used so that the, um, the, the patches would not get lost in the, um, in the design of the fabric, they're kind of their own thing. So that's what I was doing right there is, is putting that together and um, or laying it out, I think, and Anamar to help me put the actual, assemble the actual pieces together. We got a couple of pieces from a few different artists, which I don't think we have any um, photos of, but um, uh, the quilt that I worked on, I have 
pieces from a different artist besides myself, not this one, but a different one. And then we have these pieces from her. And um, then on the um, the knitted blanket, we also have a piece from Eleni, who I think was here, um, who sent in some pieces and then other people sent in um, knitted squares and we'll, we'll see those when we get to them. But yeah, so that's what this picture is about. And uh, just giving shout out to Chris Paddock, who is here uh, working on, on on his laptop. And uh, Guillermo, please feel free to chime in. This is uh, the TV installation that um, right. Guillermo yeah. did the sound for. We are going to listen to that later on. But just um, if you want to. Yeah, here. I can, uh, if you can put me in. Um, I, uh, Oops. I, I, I like to. Am I on? Yes. Um, I like to thank uh, everybody at the museum, uh, and especially Maria, Teresa, and uh, and Eva, Eve. Um, they, they did a great job. Uh, uh, I'm from, as I uh, apparently once I got there was from a different generation. Of uh, in my generation, we used to call the San Francisco Art Institute the, just the Art Institute, and you guys call it the SFI. And that that's an interesting uh, thing that I've learned along the process. Uh, for me, uh, the main process was interacting with a different generation of um, artists who have been influenced as I have uh, by uh, the staff and the the building of the Art Institute. So to me, that's what been for me the main takeaway. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it. And it, it became part of the art process. And uh, for me, um, when you go into a gallery or a museum, it's it's all of, of about publicness being seeing, looking at art. And, uh, and as an artist, uh, uh, my experience is, as probably many of you, is uh, being alone, working in your studio in the middle of the night, um, contemplating, reading, whatever, uh, but all in terms of focus on, um, an individual artist trying to become influenced and create something. Uh, the process of collaborative work in art, uh, I'm familiar with because my background, uh, uh, although I started in sculpture, uh, went on to video and then film. And uh, collaborativeness in the art forms of, of film and, and video and acting and so forth uh, are social by nature. Um, but uh, I have always been involved with the internal aspects of my focus on creating. And um, this gave me an opportunity to uh, expand my horizons by my relationships with other artists. Uh, and um, I have created installations in the past, but they've been simply individual concepts that have been uh, you know, uh, installed by myself and so forth. But I, I like to focus on the process that we went through. And I like to thank Eve for for being the, the spearhead and guide for that. Uh, uh, it was something that wasn't natural for me, uh, but uh, I, I, I acquired an interest in the interactions between uh, different people and different ideas. Uh, and when I first heard about this project uh, by Eve, I was told that there was going to be uh, three or four uh, gallery spaces and that they will be filled with completely with uh, the art uh, which uh, came out great uh, uh, but that she wanted to do an installation uh, and um, so uh, I was curious about that because I, 
I, I like installation art. And um, she said, well, what we have basically is a two fireplaces and a closet and a hallway. And you saw the closet here. <laughs> These are and, the fireplaces here. And, and you know, that kind of took me aback because uh, I've done work in, in, in large institutions and, you know, they, they give you space. <laughs> And when you're being told that you have to cover or think of something for fireplaces, uh, two large, very large, beautiful fireplaces, obviously, but, um, and a closet, um, I, I, I was really interested in what kind of process we can go through to come to uh, some sort of understanding what we're going to do there. Bianco, yeah. maybe you want to chime in just a second because Guillermo brought up the closet and you haven't spoken yet. Uh, can you can you say uh, tell us a little bit about the background to the closet? <clears throat> yes, of course. Um, so the closet was one of the final installation ideas when we were discussing during the biweekly Zoom meetings. Um, it's there were plenty of ideas floating around for what can we do in this space to create an installation that drives the point home of healing. And so that we voted and decided on um, using Dora Kauf's, um sand play therapy that she started in the 1950s based off like Jungian theory, uh, Tibetan Buddhism and play therapy. So that is the background behind uh, the sand tray and um we have that set up there in the closet um do you want me to talk about it more or should i circle back after guillermo finishes i think we have two more images from the closet now and then guillermo's images are a little bit later with the details of his uh um of his piece so maybe you want to go a little bit in depth with the next two images yeah, great. Um, so a little more. Um, there's 20 different, over 20 different varieties of sand play therapy in that's used in psychology today. Um, and so this is our SFAI rendition of sand play therapy. And the sand was collected from Baker Beach, which felt like an important connection to SFAI. Um, the there was a polaroid camera added to the table as well all of those uh little hooks on the back were for people to take photographs of the world that they created in the sand tray and then add that photograph to the collection on the wall and a little funny background story about all the items collected i went to um, a scrap location which is like a thrift craft supply store. Um, and when I was getting like a, the, the, so the idea behind sand play therapy is that you're reconnecting with some implicit memory from your childhood through the use of play and connecting to your childlike self because usually the last time we've played in a sandbox is when we were children. Um, and then you have a wide variety of objects to choose from. And so what this does here neurologically is when you're getting in touch with implicit memory along with um, your unconscious mind and you're bringing it into a sensory world through um, your sight and physical touch, you're creating neural sensory integration. So in the use of, in using this within a healing space along with talk therapy has been shown to help people healing because of this sensory integration along with play. So play is a really important element with therapy. Um, so the goal behind this was to give people a space that they could 
get in touch with their childlike self, play a little bit with these silly little <clears throat> figures and, and see what comes out of it. Um, now, when I was collecting all of these figures from scrap and I was checking out because it's a really wide range of uh, items, <laughs> the clerk was just like, I don't mean to be rude, but um, what are you doing? <laughs> Which was pretty funny. Um, so that was the closet. And then Eve also selected a wonderful soundtrack that was playing um, of some soothing like waves and the goal was that if you were at the opening and it was overwhelming at any time you could retreat into the closet and give yourself a little bit of peace <laughs> uh, and then I don't know if we have any photographs of it but um, Lupa was another artist involved with the closet and she sent these beautiful uh, holographic honeycomb shaped cutouts that we hung from the ceiling um, underneath a, a light that created these beautiful shadows on the wall here that you can see in this image. Um, so it was a it was a beautiful collaborative effort. And Guillermo, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was your soundtrack that also played in the closet, right? As it played throughout the <laughs> library. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my mistakes. Thank you for <laughs> correcting me. <laughs> I I remember installing the mica here with you, so that was cool. <laughs> and... I wanted to make a couple more comments about the closet that if you go backward there. To the um, other? Yeah. Um, Luba provided the these hexagonal shapes, and the reference, again, is, is to a honeycomb in a beehive which is a community that works together for a common purpose. It's a, beehives are very collaborative. And then the light, um, which um, is coming down, the intent for that was to take the, um, the terrifying orange sky phenomenon that most everybody in Northern California experienced during the um, 2020, I think, yeah, 2020 August fire, where the sky everywhere was this black orange. And to take that color and um, reframe it as a more soothing and healing color. So yeah, this, and I gotta say, this space is so popular. That rack is full of Polaroid pictures now. That's wonderful to hear. And, yeah. um, we had another um, very popular uh, table that was Eugenie's table um, with knitters there sitting basically throughout the whole opening. We have a little video. And Eleni, is Eleni still here? I know it's really late in Greece. But Eleni, I think, was the first one who sent in a knitted square. However, I do believe it's crocheted, Eleni. Correct me if I'm wrong. But she sent in this uh, square. That was the first one I think we got for the community security blanket, right, Eugenie? Yes. And when I first saw the image, I did not actually believe that somebody from our uh, community had done this. I thought this was a Googled image from somewhere. And then I finally saw this. Oh my God, it looks sublime. It's so pretty. It's so beautiful. And thank, yeah, um, thank you, Eleni, for taking such a great picture. We were using it to get more, but it's maybe a little intimidating, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She kind of set the bar so high <laughs> with this piece, like it was hard to follow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the knitting thing. I kind of became the talking head for this wonderful, wonderful, heartwarming collaborative. But I was so not qualified for that. Uh, because there were so many other people who actually led the charge, uh, who kind of uh, provided the ideas, who provided the material. Yeah, a little bit of it. So this shows like during the opening, like when we just sat at the table and there were just so many people who just came and they started knitting. And it was this wonderful fuzzy feeling and, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is like people are taking on to this. And like some of those uh, squares that were um, done by people looked fabulous, like not the 
not the you know like the bare bones somebody who's just knitted and then sent it it was like high level you know expertise on in knitting so it was quite i mean it was just heartwarming to see how people took to this how they all uh, just uh, collaborated on this and um uh yeah so that's where we are so even though it's 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 all like we started putting it together but we definitely definitely need more knitted squares for this and um you know like who are and to make it more interesting so i put up some people who actually knit you know like you i think people would recognize this guy and there is another girl another guy who uh, supposedly knits so and the reason why we have two men over here is men or people who identify as men please man up and please send up some knitted squares in this initiative so that we have a more gender ratio balance for this and um, we do need more squares so please send them to the monka museum um, it could be the next slide says it's a four into four or eight into eight either of them either of those two sizes uh, could be um, could work and we definitely, definitely need those. So please, please, please send them. And even video, make a video of yourself knitting. So that'll be awesome. <laughs> so that we can put that out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Like we need to send it for the uh, knitting piece. And then Guillermo, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about this too, if you want to. Martin, your partner for this project is not able to join today, but right. I think right. you, you got it, right? Go ahead. Yes. Um, yeah, I have to begin by um, thanking Chris and Martin uh, for such a wonderful idea he came up with uh, in the process. And I, I have to think that part of the uh, this art piece uh, in terms of uh, media uh, is, is the process that um, he started out uh, and uh, we sort of chimed in together um, uh, and somehow uh, made it work in terms of the installation site. Um, and it became relevant to me later on after we were through the process of doing this that I realized that it, the process itself is, is the art for me. And uh, the people being able to communicate with Kristen who lives in Europe and us talk about a project uh, related to something that we're both interested in and his initial idea came in the Thursday uh, afternoon or evening um, um, session where he said that he had gone to uh, the Louvre or, uh, or, or Paris show where there was uh, an art piece that was communicating with a ship in the middle of the ocean in the North Sea somewhere. And that the, the artists who put it together uh, made this uh, uh, communication aspect where uh, he was sending messages from the middle of the ocean and they were being seen uh, in, in a Paris uh, museum at the same time. And, and from that, uh, it, it just sparked the, uh, the interest of what I was interested in, which was video uh, and combining video with uh, texting. Uh, and Martin, uh, he started out, and I, I'm sorry that he's not here. I know he's watching. <laughs> and if he's not gonna watch, he's gonna see the reruns also. But uh, he deserves a great deal of, of, uh, of thanks for uh, the inspiration of covering uh, a fireplace with a monitor and uh, placing texting in it. And later uh, it dawned on me in the process of, of 
making the piece, uh, well, essentially the abstract of the piece was people would be able to see a text coming from the outside the museum while they were inside and they communicate about what they were seeing to the outside world at the same time. And in some way, uh, uh, communication became the aspect of it. And that's the social aspect of it, I believe. Um, and it perhaps is the unifying aspect of it uh, because when you're, we're, you're given a space of two fireplaces to do an installation, you know, I drew a big blank, but it all came together. Uh, and the reason it came together I later became very obvious once we started thinking about a fireplace. Well, fireplace has been in every building uh, throughout uh, contemporary civilization. There's been some sort of fire up to the Stone Age in the caves. And what was happening around the fireplace was communication, people telling stories, people passing on uh, their family history, uh, people being born, you know, people fornicating, whatever. It, it, and, and so the fireplace has been a symbol up to the present time where the fireplace now is, is a remnant, it's, not, it's, it's an antique, it, it no longer has a function. Uh, and what else can be done but put a, a TV screen in front of it and start a conversation as if it were still a fireplace, but just a different kind of conversation coming from different parts of the world at the same time and unifying us in some way. Uh, to me, it's still very abstract and I'm still not sure about it. But the other aspect that we were given an assignment to uh, by Eve, uh, who created this idea that we need to we need to unify the different uh, galleries in some cohesive way, and and to uh, to make the whole show kind of one thing. And what how do you unify it? Well. I thought about that for a long time uh, once uh, the idea was brought up by you. And I thought uh, audio could be used to unify because audio in terms of music and contemporary times is one thing that unifies us. We all go out and dance. I mean, we all sing the same songs that we hear. And, and this is a social media that interacts and so the idea was to create uh, a background for the audio track uh, and an audio track and and I initially the screen was supposed to be with images but then became apparent with terms of time and and uh, resources you couldn't put anything in there. And at that point, text dropped into the blank screen. And the idea is basically that communications coming in and out of the museum uh, and the uh, audio is the relaxing and the soothing part that makes the event, which is in the public building, uh, and uh, a very, um, very external, a more internal thing, uh, a, a feeling and environment of sound that's soothing uh, and relaxing, and perhaps as hypnotizing <laughs> as a fire in a primitive site. Um, so, uh, basically it's, it's morphed into, uh, something very interesting for me, at least. And, and, and that is that, uh, art, art has changed a whole lot. And for me, 
Um, it's no longer an individual project. It has to be a project where different people chime in and there's tension in the air and that tension helps produce and filter uh, elements of thought. And when you have great minds and great artists together, I think a lot can possibly happen. And that's my experience. Thanks so much, Guillermo. Uh, that really brought it all together, like your sound did as well in the exhibition. And we do have a question already, and I just put in the chat as well for everyone to please put questions uh, for the Q&A uh, in the chat. Uh, Julie has a first question to Bianca. Uh, was that difficult to install? <laughs> um... Yes and no. <laughs> I think it was um, a beautiful collaborative moment and it took a lot of people to work together to pull it off. And the difficult portion of it was just running around and grabbing everything um, needed to make the install happen. But um, it was all a labor of love. Thanks so much, Bianca. And I think Eve worked a lot on that closet as well. Eve, you want to add something? Well, Guillermo spent two days in the closet and so did um, uh, Richard also, Richard Goldberg also, they spent two days in the closet and Guillermo also spent another day in the attic. <laughs> so, um, and on day three, he said, I really want out of the closet. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, setting up the lights and um, that, that was probably the hardest thing. And then figuring out how to get Luba's um, mobile up was hard, but yeah, it was a labor of love. And um, it was, yeah, again, very collaborative. And I agree with what Guillermo said about um the soundtrack is it's it's very subliminal and it puts you in a space and to think about people having access to that while they're thinking about messaging um it's a unifying experience it, it, and again very um supportive of the entire influx exhibit and specifically the articles of belonging Thanks, Eve. So we don't have the answers on our website at the moment, because right now you can only see the answers uh, in the museum. However, I wanted to share with you uh, the page that is on our website so you can listen to Guillermo's soundtrack in full. I hope that's OK, Guillermo. Uh, yeah. And we're definitely going to archive this once it's done. We still have messages coming in. You can you saw you can also use the QR code. Uh, we put that up so people in the museum can actually easily access the the the, uh, the submission form as well for any stories. And it seems to be working very well. It is a huge surprise to me. I want to give a huge shout out to Lior Barr from our web team who kind of took Martin uh, Martin Wolven's idea. He had kind of written program already, but Lior put it on our Wix page. But, which is a little bit of a different programming uh, beast. And so it's just also was really wonderful to see everyone come together to make this happen. And the director of the museum always calls me if something is wrong and, and we fix it and it's still running. So it's very exciting for us. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions from the audience uh, or comments? Uh, Eleni, if you have something you wanna share about making your square, let us know. And then we have a couple more minutes otherwise for, for the group, if you if anyone uh, wants to have some final thoughts or share, share some final thoughts or. Uh, no, no, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm really happy that my piece made it and joined all of your and made pieces and our energies, you know, got together in one piece. Um, that was wonderful. Thank you, Emily, for picking up my piece from the mail. And I do remember it was a big discussion with, 
when we were having these collaborative team meetings and I only made it to half of them, um, but it's, it was always like, how can we extend the ability for people to participate, right? Uh, beyond the walls of the museum, how can we include the local community and have people who live in Jaco and the region feel at home in what we bring, but also how can we include alumni who are not able to come and travel so far, you know? So, and I, and I think a huge shout out to Eve, a huge shout out to Julie Blankenship who is here uh, as well. And obviously a huge shout out to Jeremy Morgan who all took on this crazy idea of really including 175 artists and make this really about community and of all of you to, to create this beautiful collaborative project and extend that idea even further. So I'm, I'm, I'm just really so grateful that it really came through when you were at the opening <laughs> and I was running around like crazy with my iPad on a Zoom to include more people, you know, it was just so you could feel it that it was really about community and this coming together. And we have one more question from Julie. Um, and thanks, Eugenie. Uh, Julie is asking, do we know if there has been participation from the local community? Eve probably knows that the most, the best. Yes, we have. Um, and yeah, Pat Macias, who's the director of the museum, said that this is the most, um, uh, I guess, the response from the community has been really um, notable, she said, more than they, they've had before with people wanting to participate and wanting to know what this is all about. It, you know, and so, yeah, we've had um, some community knitted squares come in. People have sat down at the table and knitted them back together. We've had um, people sending messages. We've had people um, before um, the um, some people who sent the type or the um, the squares for the quilting were somewhere from the local community. So yeah, the the idea that it be personally regionally and internationally collaborative is we're seeing that and it's just really gratifying thanks so much eve and thanks so much to all of you Anna marta bianca eugenie emily and guillermo for presenting today and sharing your process and also for all of you who joined from afar julie go ahead yeah, I just wanted to say, um, it's great to see all of you. I wanted to say that um, I talked with Pat, the director, um, after the show opened, and um, she was saying that she did her best to get the word out there to the press and really hasn't had much of a response. And um, just want to urge all of you to talk to anyone that you think of it doesn't have to be a formal art writer it could be someone who wants to do something experimental or something small or something you know or an essay or interviews or we could interview each other but um, this is an opportunity that we have for all of us for sfaa for the museum and um, i really really hope that we can um, you know make something larger from this and help um, gain momentum over the time that we still have left in the museum. And I also want to give a gigantic thank you to Eve, who is the point person for this monster, <laughs> this beautiful monster, and uh, for Maria Teresa, who also kept the boat, kept her hand on the rudder there. Thank you. Thanks thank so you much, that. Julie. Thanks, but I do, Julie. <laughs> I do have to say people really need to understand how fundamental Maria Teresa, she doesn't ever mention that she's actually the glue that holds everything together, but that's the truth. And Thanks, she's also the glue, not that not that keeps it together. She's the one who makes it happen. Like she knows everything about electronics, computer programs, all these things that um, are really essential for putting something like this that was done all remotely you know it was you know very few people here in chica working so yes maria teresa 
I, I want to, and I know Bianca, you have your hand. I, I just want to uh, point out that uh, we have this lovely catalog that Terry Scott and I um, worked on really hard. It has like over 200 pages and you can now order it for like 30 bucks uh, with the link that is finally working on our website. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just a really, really nice document of all the artists in the show and of all the collaborative pieces at the very end. So uh, we have for each collaborative piece, we also have a, uh, this got an updated picture. I got the test version, but <laughs> there's Guillermo. So just so you know, it's happening now. It's a cute little magazine and you can get it on our website. It, it's print on demand. And yeah, uh, Bianca, go ahead. Please close us out here. <laughs> Well, I had a follow up question um, for Julie, if we do have someone that might be interested in writing anything about the exhibit, would you like to, for me to put them in contact with you? Even Maria, what would you like? You can see, see us all. That's best. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, yeah. thank you. Thanks, yeah. Bianca. And thanks, everyone, so much for coming today. Thank you all so much for presenting. I'm going to stop the recording now so we can say goodbye.